Hi guys, welcome to Linksar YouTube channel. My name is Ram Mishra and I am your online instructor. So what's in this video? In this video we will talk about how to deploy your pod on Kubernetes cluster. So let's begin the topic. But before start the lab session we need to understand few points which is what is pod and its use cases in Kubernetes cluster. So let me go back on the official documentation. Yeah, here you can see this is the official documentation of Kubernetes. Here the thing is mentioned what is pod. If I scroll down, it's mentioned here. So, um, pod is the basic execution unit of Kubernetes application. It is a collection of containers that are deployed together on the same host. Pod in a Kubernetes cluster can be used in two different ways. First, pod that run a single container. This is the most popular way of using pod in Kubernetes cluster. And Kubernetes manages the pod instead of directly managing the containers. Second thing, pod can be run multiple containers that need to work together. In this model, a pod can have multiple containers that are tightly coupled to share the resources, right? It is always recommended to have a single container whenever possibility is there. Grouping multiple containers is a single pod is relatively advanced use cases. You should use this pattern only in specified instances in which your containers are tightly coupled. If we deploy a single container, we can generally replace the word pod with the container, right? And one more thing we need to understand that the pod always run on node. A node is a worker machine in a community and maybe either virtual or physical machine, depending on the cluster. So each node is managed by the master one, right? So node can have multiple pods and the Kubernetes master automatically handles scheduling the pods across the node in the cluster. So in this demo, we will see how to create our first pod on Kubernetes cluster, right? If you get the more information about pod, you can refer this page, right? So let's move to the lab session. So I'm on back my VM. Let me clear the screen. So guys, uh, here you can see I'm working on single Linux machine where I have already installed Minikube single node Kubernetes cluster, right? So let me show you the OS release version. Currently, I am using RHEL 9.3 and if I go back Minikube status, okay, see, it's running, right? So, Minikube is a tool that set up Kubernetes environment on local PC or laptop. So, if you don't know how to install Minikube in Linux, I will recommend you to watch my Minikube installation video before moving to deploy this lab on your environment. Even I will share the link of the video in the description also. So, let me uh, move to the next step. Uh, before moving to the uh, deploy the pod in our Kubernetes cluster, we need to check the status first. So to check the node availability in the cluster and to check the version of kubectl, use the following command which is kubectl and version. See, uh, kubectl is a command line tool in Kubernetes. It allows you to run a command against Kubernetes cluster. You can use kubectl to deploy application, inspect and manage cluster resources and view the logs. For more information, we can take the help from kubectl hyphen hyphen help command hyphen hyphen help command. So these all are the commands can be done with the help of kubectl command line tool. Now let's check the node status. So if you want to check the node status, command is kubectl get nodes. So here you can see uh, my minikube node is ready. Once you have node available in the cluster, you are ready to create your first port. Now we will check the list of the port in the default namespace. So command is kubectl get ports. See, no resource found in the default namespace. See, this is the this will be our first port on the cluster. So you will not see any port in the default namespace. Namespace are a way to organize cluster into the virtual subcluster. They can be useful uh, when different teams or projects share the Kubernetes cluster. Any number of namespaces are supported with a cluster, each logically separated from the others, but with the capability to communicate with the each other, right? So let's move to the first step, which is launch our first port. So we have two ways, imperative and declarative method to launch the pod in the Kubernetes cluster. First is imperative way. Imperative way means creating Kubernetes resources directly at the command line against a Kubernetes cluster. And second is declarative way. Declarative way means we can define the resources within a manifest file and then applies those definition into the cluster. So let's go one by one. Let's start with the imperative way. Imperative way means simple. kubectl run. Let me go with first pod and hyphen hyphen image 
say httpd that's it is equal to httpd press enter so now my first pod is successfully launched with the base of httpd so kubectl is a command line tool i'm going to run just like docker run here is a kubectl run first pod is a pod name and it is based on httpd image so we can check the status using the kubectl get pods get pods command hyphen o widely i can check it the range see it's running and the ip address is 10.244.0.7 this is the ip of my pod right so we can get the pod id let's move inside my mini cube cluster node and hit on this ip so i'll open a new tab i said mini cube ssh let me curl and the ip address of the machine 10.244.0.7 10 10.244.0.7 yep it's worked you can see that right so uh, i can see the default welcome page of my apache container cdbd container so if you want to get detailed information about each of the ports that provide kubernetes infrastructure then we need to run the kubectl describe pod command so you can go with kubectl describe pod and your pod name so in my case my pod name is first hyphen pod so we'll get the described detail information so here you can see if i scroll down my pod name is first pod currently it is in on default and the node is in minikube this is the node ip and this is the my pod ip 10.244.0.7 container id and currently it is in running condition and everything is here successfully assigned pulling the image pull the image create the container start the container so with the help of this command what we can do we can get the more information from here am i right now if you want to delete this pod then we can run kubectl delete pod command so just like we have created kubectl run i will run replace kubectl d e l e t e delete pod and what pod first hyphen pod press enter see it's deleted so this is the first method which is imperative method to launch the pod in simple command line tool so if we go back again kubectl get pods currently we don't have any pod right now uh, move to the other method which is declarative way using manifest file to deploy the pod apart from using the cli tool you can also use a configuration manifest file for deploying a pod in a working cluster so this is one of the most preferred way of managing an entire life cycle of pod including deployment configuration updation and termination so let's create a file uh, okay i have a folder named ks and currently you can see i don't have any file here okay now let me create a file inside here with a block of code right so uh, my first pod dot yaml right so pod minfil files could be based on json or could be based on yaml format so press enter now i need to write down code here so let me copy the code from the kubernetes official documentation and paste it here so i'm back on my documentation here is the example simple pod yaml file so let me copy then i will explain one by one right click copy and paste and save it okay so here the api version define the version schema of the representation of an object right kind the kind means the kind of object you want to create so currently i'm talking about the pod so it is pod later on we will talk about deployment replica set services the so pod uh, so kind will be changed according to the object so currently it is pod object here it is pod since we are creating a pod name name must be unique right so uh, within a unique within the name space so here you can see uh, my pod name is nginx right spec means specification of the desired behavior of the pod so here i am going to launch a bunch container container name is nginx this is the image which is going to be wrap over there and default port is 80 so here i'm going to launch a new port having the name nginx container name is also nginx with nginx image and that will be run on the container port 80 right so now i'm ready to create my pod uh, using this file so let me save it command is kubectl apply hyphen f f for file my first pod.yml press enter see so it's uh, we can get the details remember the command kubectl get pods hyphen o white so it's creating let me go with continuously watch 
so I use hyphen W here container is creating yep it is in running condition and you can see the pod ID is 10.244.0.8 perfect control C or quit from there see it is ready and running so let me hit again from my minikube node as minikube ssh curl ip is 10.244.0.8 press enter okay here you can see welcome to nginx right so this is the welcome page of nginx one server so to confirm it is if the pod is actually running or not we can run the uh, command from directly from here also kubectl exec execution nginx container name oh, sorry pod name and then hyphen hyphen service status service sorry nginx status yeah it's running so uh, this command run inside our pod it is similar to running uh, running docker exe command right so if you want to remove this port, you can run the following command, uh, kubectl delete hyphen f, d-e-l-e-t-e -E -E, delete hyphen f, and you can remove that one. So how easy it is. So with the help of configuration file, we can modification and, and you can do each and everything. Even you can save it in the GitHub repository for tracking maintenance, right? So now you can see kubectl get pod. If I go back, all done, all gone, right? So guys, in this demo, we learn basic things about the pod and their life cycle stages. So if you need a code, you can go and follow the official documentation of Kubernetes. Everything is mentioned here, how to run the command and whatever I'm going to dis uh, dis um, discuss, everything is mentioned here, how we can run that one. And the multiple containers are there also. I will explain in the next to next video. So uh, we learned here basic things, the pod and the life cycle stage. We saw the steps of create our first Nginx pod on Kubernetes. We also saw how to get the details regarding the pod can be extract. Along with this, we explored the command to delete the pod. So in upcoming session, we will learn more about the Kubernetes cluster uh, related to videos. And finally guys, this is the end of this topic. Hopefully you enjoyed and learned new things. Soon I will come up with another new interesting topic. Till then keep practicing. If you feel something I have missed or you wanted to know more something else, please reach out through my social media links which is mentioned in the description and if you like this video please do not forget to like share and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon button for the latest update thanks for watching stay safe and goodbye